Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vlid Ashraf. I work as a Node.js developer at Relayer in Berlin. I'm also a member of Node.js Foundation and OpenJS Foundation and contributor to some open source projects. So today we are talking about validating event-driven architect with async API. How many of you already know async API? Okay, so yeah, not a lot because it's relatively a new project. Uh, but it's like very useful for anyone who is using Kafka, RabbitMQ, MQTT, or WebSockets. So how, how many of you use any of these technologies, Kafka? Yeah. So to TLDR, it's swagger for Kafka. So you'll get the idea of what it is. So it's a schema definition. We'll, we'll talk about it in details. And let's start. So my name is Walid Ashraf. And how my like colleagues pronounce it is like this, valid. And yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's the only joke I have in my slide. So you can laugh as much as you want right now. The rest is pretty boring. Okay, so I work at Relayer. We are an IoT company based in Berlin. Uh, our clients, we provide customized solution to clients where we receive data through MQTT or Kafka through their through hardware and sensors. We process them on our cloud, then we show them in a fine, fine like uh, fancy dashboard. We send them alerts, emails. So just to get you an idea what kind of like industry we're working in. Uh, our process is like uh, we, we have like some sensors on machines, then there's a gateway. And then we ingest the data in our cloud where we do processing, analytics, storage, and then we have some like dashboards and mobile apps where the client can see what's happening with their devices, et cetera. So that's, that puts us in a, in a situation where we have a lot of, we do have to deal a lot of asynchronous communication from the devices uh, which are sending data through MQTT, Kafka, or maybe through even uh, HTTP protocols. So uh, a little about uh, Open API and Swagger is uh, it, uh, Swagger was uh, initiated in 2010. Uh, it came um, part, the, the, the schema definition came part of uh, Open API in 2015 because it got so much uh, value and used by everyone in the industry because that was the only way or one of the only way you can validate what's in your HTTP request, what you can send in the response, or how you can define the schema. And the other part was uh, you can get a uh, nice fancy documentation for your all of HTTP communications. And then we have async API. The, the project started around two years ago. It's uh, been used by Slack, SAP, some uh, um, Salesforce, some companies, but it's not very popular right now. So. The, the need for this is because even the messaging, the async communication we do between the microservices, is, uh, it's a contract between two, two services. Like one is the publisher and the other is the subscriber, and they both need to know what kind of messages one is publishing and other is subscribing. So they can validate it. They can, uh, when they receive it, they can check the, the body. And on, on the other side, the producer should know what data should send or not to send. The async API also gives you uh, an ability to create documentation, which is uh, understandable by humans. It's not like a JSON, but it's actually a, uh, a nice uh, documentation just like Swagger. You can read about what channels or topics you have, what payload do they have. Yeah, there's also tooling around how to use the schema definition of your um, async API for testing and validation. Like you can test on runtime, uh, in your production environment, if when you receive a Kafka Swagger, uh, Kafka MQTT message, that is it valid according to your definition you have defined, and yeah, it gives you ability to to create nice documentations. So let me just show you how it looks like. Uh, you can go to the uh, this website playground.asyncapi.io. You see here I have defined a, a YAML, a schema in the YAML file, just like the Swagger, and here I have a nice view of it just like we see in the Swagger files. So it has few attributes, like you can define under the channels, you can define your, your topics or your channels. For, for MQTT, it's the type of, uh, for a Kafka, it's the type of the message. Like I have defined user events, 
and then message you can just tag with the ref just like in the swagger and you can define what properties it will have what all they required what's the type and here you can see a nice example where it also generates a um, automatically generated example and you can see this this the schema itself what are the keys and what are the restrictions on them Okay, let's go back. Now you have seen an example. So the uh, the problem we faced with event-driven architect was that we had around 30 or 40 microservices written in Node, and all of them were communicating internally through Kafka. We had more than 50 types of messages with different payload, and not everyone knew what's inside. So whenever you are debugging or creating something, uh, adding some key, you had to ask someone, a developer who has already worked on that type of message to see or go check the code by yourself and see what's inside or if you want to change it, if you want to add a new attribute, if you want to remove it. And it was a mess. No one, no one knew everyone. And we also have some, some services in Scala where Scala people are working on them and we don't communicate, the, like the, the, the different teams, no, uh, the backend teams don't communicate much. Even the frontend team don't communicate much about what's uh, in the payload. And every time they have to check, they have to look at at the code, or we created a like a, a markdown file, just a readme to to keep it uh, up to date. And then problem with the, with such documentation is it always gets outdated. No one cares about it, so you have different problems. And uh, that's I think happening in um, all the microservice uh, driven architects where you have multiple services and they are communicating to each other through some of these protocols. And then you don't, you don't know how to have one source of truth for all the communication between the services. So we had uh, something like this. We had uh, client devices, which were sending data through MQTT to our cloud. And then we had a, a broker, which converts uh, the MQTT message to relative Kafka messages. And these are our services communicating uh, internally through Kafka. So yeah, there was a lot of communication going on. There still is, and we wanted to have something to uh, one for the documentation and the other for to validate all the messages if it, it has the required payload or not. So in uh, in my company, there are different teams like backend, DevOps, frontend, and all of them needs to uh, know the content of the messages, especially the backend teams. And we also reside in different offices. Some are in Munich, some are in Berlin, and different people are working on different uh, services. So there's no like one documentation. And also we have uh, MQTT protocol for the devices for the client. So we need to tell them also what you want, what you should send to our cloud in a nice uh, way, documented way, and also validate if they are sending it right way or the wrong way. So. Previously, we were doing something like this. We had a readme file markdown, and someone would know the code base and know what's in the payload. And for the testing, we had hard-coded schema in a service, in the services where we just uh, write down all the properties and match them using the assert library or something. To, but this gets outdated because, and whenever you want to update, you have to like uh, write it down as a code hard-coded message. With async API, we created two documents, for one for MQTT and one for Kafka messages. And we defined all of our events, just like I showed you for like device on, off, temperature, and for internal communications, user created, user updated, user deleted, whatever. So it solved uh, our problem for, for the documentation because it, it gives you like a nice uh, view, to, and it also generates a, um, a output file which you can easily share. Let me just show you how it looks like in one of our services, which is public. So if I just go to So this is a bit old UI for the async API, but this is what you get if you want to generate a um, HTML document for out of it. So you see these are the top topics on MQTT you can define. And then we have defined all the uh, all the payload and the messages inside it. And the, one of like this document we can share easily with our clients, and they'll see what what's inside. And we can also validate using this schema uh, inside our services. So yeah, you can see it's a very nice way. It gives you all the messages, the schemas you have used, 
and, and the topics you have. So now in the come about how to validate and how to test it if the message is right or not, or what property it is missing or, or not. So we, we wrote this uh, library, it's open source, async API validator. Uh, it's a key value based schema validation. You give it the key of your message and you pass the payload and it will validate according to the schema definition you have defined. It uses AGV module for uh, JSON comparison. Maybe you all, some of you already know it. Also browser compatible. So I'll just show you how it works. So uh, the project is uh, already on NPM. We use it uh, widely in our services. Uh, it's a validator. Uh, you can go to the GitHub uh, and uh, just check it out. So I'll just show you how, how it works. So I have required the validator on top and then I'm, I need to pass the schema, which is, which is this file. Uh, the schema is same as I showed you in the example for the user event. So I have defined the schema where I have uh, these uh, properties on a message and the message key is user created, let's say. So I load the schema on this line and then I uh, ask the validator to validate this uh, key of the message and the payload. And then I log the result. And let's see how, how it works for this. So it says data user uh, name should match format email and user creator is the key. So if I go and check the schema for, I think it was the user name. So it's the format is email because these types are defined as like uh, normal JSON schema definition. So you can just have it as the swagger file, uh, as the swagger definitions, all of them like type, format, or a pattern. So if I just, if I just change it because I think it's missing an at and then just run it again. Okay, so it's it's passing. And let's see if, if there's any required property. So this uh, the ID is a required property in the message, which which is mostly if you use like Kafka or, or some similar protocol. So if you if you let's say if one of the messages didn't send an ID and the rest of the payload was okay. So yeah, so it will tell you that, yeah, this property is required. Just like, just like you have on, on, on Swagger definitions, if you use it for validations. So yeah, this gave us a really good opportunity to, uh, and ability to validate our messages which are coming through the client side because we, we were facing a lot of issues when we didn't know what's inside the message and how to debug or how to tell them what was the missing and also give them a nice documentation which they can use. Okay, so let's move forward. So we uh, started using it. Uh, we started using it in production. We made a uh, private package of our async API schema. So all uh, like Kafka and MQT schema, we, we push them uh, into a private repo and on Verdachio. And we edit it as a dependency in the services and then use the validator to validate the messages. So on, uh, we, we also doing it on runtime in production for all the messages which are coming through the client side, but for the messages, internal communication like Kafka, we only do it when running the unit test or when doing integration tests between the services, not on, on production live environment. So the, the flow was like this. So we have, uh, we consume the messages and we, we forward it to the, previously it was like this, we forward it to the relative service. So we, um, when, we, uh, when we started consuming, we started validating, also validating the message through. And if there's uh, no error, if the message schema is, uh, is, is right, if it's not valid, we just log the errors, but don't, don't fail it or don't send an error back to the client. Just, just log it and see it in the logs if there was something missing. And if it's a valid message, then just forward it to relative service or inside the cloud somewhere. And even if there's an error, it's not a valid message, we'll still forward it to the service. The, just, so this was the flow when we started using the async API, how to add, how to get it in, inside the running production environment. So we, we just validate, log it, and rest of the use case remains the same, how, how it was working before. 
after like going through one or two weeks of process and seeing all the logs, we saw that sometimes it was our schema which was not right and sometimes it was the payload the client was sending was not right. So we, we made uh, tweaks in the, in the schema definition and sometimes we communicated back to the client and uh, asked them to change the payload. And once that was done, everything was fine, we, we started sending the error events to a for, forwarding. We just like stopped it. So when, if, if the schema validation fails, uh, we throw an error back to the client or don't, don't let it go into our system. So it was, th this move was pretty easy for us to, to adopt the schema inside our production environment. So uh, the use cases for, uh, for us was, was, uh, are, are pretty uh, obvious. It, it was the validating of all the communication. We did it for documentations. We use it for the, our system tests. And uh, when, uh, now we also introduce this process of if, you, if a developer wants to extend a message, remove a key uh, from existing messages, or want a different type of channel or topic, you first open a PR in the schema definition repo. Everyone approves it, the team approves it, and then you start working on actually making the changes in the services. So it, it gave us a really nice way how to implement or make changes in the existing messages. Otherwise, it was previously, yeah, someone would be working on the code itself and then reviewing and, and people would see, oh, okay, this property is removed, this property is added, these are the checks on it. So now we first get settled on the schema definition, how the messages will look. Once that's approved, you start working on the, on the code itself. So this saved us a lot of time in reviewing uh, the PRs and actually developing new kind of messages. It's just like uh, if you do for the swagger, first you change the swagger and introduce a new endpoint, and every brand is okay with it, then you start developing further on. So for the external use case, it helped us for, for a, lot, a lot for the clients, because previously we were managing a document by ourselves to share with them, and now it also gives them a really nice error about what key is not a valid key and what type of uh, properties it should have, like it should be an email or it should have length less than 64 or something. So it was easy for them also to fix if there's something's broken. So um, when I started working, uh, when we started working, I also con started contributing to async API, the schema definition. Uh, it's a very, now it's getting very widely used in a lot of uh, companies like Slack. And we just released version two of schema, which uh, which have a lot of different properties. You can you can define custom bindings for protocols. Uh, it supports different kind of schemas, and you can do like channel based validation. So we also have a Slack channel for async API. Uh, we also have biweekly meetings on YouTube, which you can anyone can join. And yeah, it's open source. You can uh, contribute uh, in any kind of way. And we are also working on a lot of tooling around the schema definition right now, just like, just like this validator, we are working on generators which will generate the code from your defined schema. And so if you define your schema for different messages, you can generate JavaScript or Node or Java code in different languages through the schema definition. Just like you, you have support for Swagger, which you can generate. And uh, so yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for tooling around this right now. So yeah, that's it. If you have any question, let me know. So you can reach out to me on Twitter. You can check these links if you have any questions. And just let me know if you have any questions.